I've been standing on this stage for about 15 seconds now, but within the first 0.4 of those 15 seconds that you saw me walking up this stage, each and every one of you will have already formed an opinion about me on the basis of this first impression. It's pretty quick, isn't it? Just 0.4. I believe this also happens when you look at a painting for the first time. And in the last couple of years, I've been working as an art consultant, and I have seen a lot of paintings, trust me. <laughs> and I'm the first to admit that I don't fall in love with each painting the minute that I see it, or the first 0.4 seconds I see it. But I devised a trick. I devised three questions that I always use to get a second impression of a painting, because every painting is worthwhile. Sometimes you just need to look twice to understand. I ask myself, what is it that I see? Which techniques are used to give me this impression? And what's the story behind the painting? Let me illustrate it to you. This gorgeous painting is made by Julia Lama, a female artist, in 1730. What do we see? We see two figures, human, one adult holding a child. It might be his own child, we don't know yet. They are sitting outside. We know this because in the background we see rocks and trees, perhaps a mountain. Overall, this is quite a warm painting. It's giving us a pretty good feeling. Which techniques did Julia Lama use to give us this first impression? The colors, for instance, they're very warm. A lot of orange pigments, browns, a little bit of blue and green in the back, but not too overwhelming. But what's the story? We don't know what the two figures are doing. If they're father and son, maybe they're playing. Wouldn't understand why they're nude, but still, they might be playing. But what if I told you that the title of this painting is Saturn devouring his son. Now, the verb to devour means to eat. Saturn um, is a Greek name, sorry, is a Roman name. He's part of Roman mythology. In Greek, he's called Kronos. And as we know of Roman and Greek mythology, they're all kind of dramatic. Saturn was a man who ruled the land, and everyone in that land feared him and he absolutely loved it. At a certain point, he went to an oracle and asked, is there ever going to be a moment in my life where I lose this power, this reign that I love? He was quite confident. <laughs> the oracle said, well, you know what, Saturn? There is, because one of your children is going to murder you and take over this position that you have. Now, what did Saturn do? He didn't decide to just sit down his children, talk to them. No, he decided to murder them. And mind you, this is Roman mythology, he didn't just murder them, he decided to eat them. So, Julia Lama chose to show us the moment that Saturn is taking a bite out of his baby. Does this change your opinion about this painting? I hope it does. Now, Julia Lama wasn't the only one who depicted this story in art history. About 100 years later, an amazing, brilliant painter called Francisco Goya did the same, but in quite a different fashion. <laughs> it's kind of creepy, isn't it? What do we see? We see two figures again, the larger one obviously being Saturn, he doesn't, doesn't really look very human, though. I mean, he has a head, arms, legs, but he's kind of out of proportion. Again, he's holding a child, but he's already a bit further in the story since the child is already beheaded. Um, we don't know where they are because Goya didn't find the background very interesting. Everything happens in the front. But overall, this painting is giving us a creepy feeling. Do you agree? Which techniques did Goya use to give us that feeling? Again, the colors. Almost everything is dark. He is very wild with the way he used his paint on the canvas. But there's a trick that painters use. If you have a contrast between dark and light, the viewer's eyes see the light parts first. 
So the, the child that Saturn is holding is very important to Goya. But, and this is the biggest difference between the two paintings, we see the expression on Saturn's face. Because we couldn't see it in this painting. Goya wants us to notice the eyes. But what's the story behind the eyes? If you look closely, you see a lot of emotion in the eyes of Saturn. These are not just the eyes of a man that's feared by many. These are eyes filled with despair. Because Goya is choosing to show us the exact moment that Saturn figures out he is doing something unforgivable, that he is a monster. Does this change your opinion about this painting? I hope it does. Why am I telling you this story? A couple of years ago, I learned a new word in the English language. It was the word sonder, S-O-N-D-E-R. And sonder means the overwhelming feeling that you get when you figure out that each person you meet is as complex as you are. Mind-blowing that was for me, because I understood that the three questions I was using in my professional life, I wasn't using in my social life. Often you come across people that are, you know, they're cool, they're perfectly nice, but they're just not going to be your BFF, which is fine, because who has the time to be friends with everyone? But then I'd usually be like, okay, hi, nice to meet you, see you later, and not put much effort in it, which is a shame, because I started using my questions, and I understood that everyone is interesting. Everyone has a second story, a second impression. Look at me, for example. What do you see? You see a young woman, mid-twenties, perhaps Asian. Sometimes people think I'm Hawaiian, which I think is pretty cool, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm standing here on this stage talking to all of you, wearing red heels, brown pants, black top, hair is up. Overall, you might say that I look very confident. You might even mistake it with arrogance. But which techniques am I using to give you this impression? The red heels are so that I stand very tall. Red is also a color for passion. The brown pants are very tight. I mean, they're very tight. It's so... I've been holding him in my breath for about two hours, and I almost fainted backstage. But it gives me an hourglass figure, which makes me feel very powerful, and I get a booty as well, which is pretty cool. <laughs> my hair is up, because I know that when I get nervous, I start playing with it, which doesn't look very professional. My shoulders are straight, so that I stand tall, and I have a good posture. But what's the story behind the shoulders? I used to do classical ballet when I was a child. Pretty cool, huh? But I didn't just do classical ballet. When I was a bit older, I did football or soccer as well for about three seasons. I was <laughs> the central defense, which is a terrifying position because you're the only person between a goal behind you and the girl running hysterically towards you, which is very frightening because girls, oh my god, they're very scary. <laughs> I'm not very musical, but I have a blue ukulele, which is really cool. I'm not very good yet, I only know four chords, but it's blue, so it makes me look good anyway. I should never be invited to your birthday party, because I have a very irrational but real fear of balloons. It's called globophobia. Oprah Winfrey has it as well, so it's legit. <laughs> But I'm going to be the girl at your birthday party, sitting in a corner, terrified of a balloon ever touching her skin. There are some balloons backstage, by the way. I saw them. <laughs> Didn't help my nerves. <laughs> but I'm also the girl that wakes up every morning, afraid of ever disappointing 15-year-old Adinda, because when I was 15 and I first saw The Kiss by Gustav Klimt, I fell madly in love with it. I even spent my last 50 euros in 2012 on a bus ride, it took me 18 hours to go to Vienna to see the painting. I spent 30 hours there, completely in awe, and then 18 hours back again. 
But sometimes I wake up and I'm afraid that that passion I feel won't get me as far as 15-year-old Adinda thought that she could go. And sometimes I'm afraid that I'm taking too long. I'm forgetting steps. Does that sound very confident now? I want to invite you all to think about these three questions next time you meet someone you're not immediately impressed with, because you might surprise yourself. We are all surrounded by amazing people. Thank you for listening.